What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new video on my channel. But before we get on to the topic for today, I would love for you to do a few things. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notifications for whenever I come out with new content on this channel. And when you are finished watching this video, I would love it if you would leave me a comment below. That way I can get back to whatever it is that you had to say to me for today. For today's topic, I want to talk about a video request that was asked of me on Instagram. The person who reached out to me wanted me to talk about the black person who acts white or talks white and my opinions about them being bullied, made fun of, talked about and all that in between. And I really want to dive into that. So this is a topic that I'm pretty familiar with because, let's be real, anybody who listens to me on my channel can tell that I speak with a proper dialect. And growing up, people did point that out to me all the time. So I do have some familiarity with this type of uh, conversation. And it's something that I think doesn't really get dived into, not from the perspective of the person or, or whether or not this is right or wrong, but more so the origins, how we got to this point. We really need to get into the origins of how this black kid starts talking white and acting white. And I think the one thing that nobody really wants to point out is the fact that this really starts from the way that their parents raised them. When you have a parent who either wants you to go to a private school where you are forced to assimilate to an environment, especially where you're around a bunch of white kids and you're that one black kid or you're one of only a few black kids, then naturally they're going to start speaking like the people who are around them. And what happens with these kids are that they get talked about by both black kids and by uh, white kids as well, too, because other black kids are looking at them thinking that, oh, they don't speak like the rest of the, that. This dude doesn't speak like the rest of us or a chick. She doesn't speak like the rest of us. So we're going to clown her because she does. not And the white kids are projecting that this black kid is not acting this in the same way that they expect a black person to act and to speak. So in other words, they have in their mind this negative racist stereotype about how all black people are supposed to speak and usually with them it's an exaggerated form of ebonics and that type of thing and it's also to make the insinuation that we're stupid as well too assuming that ebonics is related to being stupid which it's totally not um they make that assumption and so when they see a black person who speaks with a proper dialect, they project that image onto them. So that's the reason why they get a lot of hell from both sides of the fence, because there is this stigma that black people are supposed to talk in Ebonics and they're supposed to talk in a way that's not, quote unquote, intelligent. And that's not to equate Ebonics with being intelligent, because those two things are absolutely not the same. There are a lot of people who speak in Ebonics or from the hood or don't speak with a proper dialect who are very intellectual and are very articulate. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that the dominant society does conflate those two things. So I think they project that when a black person does not speak in that manner, that they're speaking white because white automatically is assumed to be the thing that is good, intellectual, proper and above other classes in society again, both intellectually and also in vernacular. But we should not regulate one's handle on the English language when they are black, because that in itself is anti-black, whether they speak in Ebonics or whether they speak proper. Point I'm trying to make without going on a rabbit hole is that the parents typically are wanting their kids to assimilate to the, assimilate to the dominant society. So they have them acting white, talking white, and that type of thing because of the fact that they believe that this is going to lead them to more opportunities. I'm telling you from experience, y'all, and I'm also telling you all from what I've also seen uh, from the outside. A lot of times they want you to have proximity to the dominant society and they hope that you're able to blend in. So they want their kid to speak in that way. So I think that's one of the reasons why it happens. The other reason why I think it happens too is because that kid literally is kind of cooning. You know, they have 
embrace that mentality because their parents have embraced the coon mentality. They also do that as well, too. And they're black kids who called them out as a result. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. And this is where me and the pro black community kind of separate. and We kind of sever. But a lot of times the pro black community will say that a lot of kids recognize that um, these black kids who speak white are cooning and they don't know how to articulate it. I think that that can happen, but I don't think that's often the case. As a matter of fact, I think that you can be a black person who doesn't speak in a proper dialect. You speak like other black people and things like that. And you could be cooning too. There's a lot of coons from the hood. There are a lot of coons who speak in Ebonics, you know? So you can definitely see, especially when you look at a lot of like music videos and things like that. A lot of them are glorifying all these millionaires and billionaires who don't give a shit about them. They glorify a lot of um, gangs that are non-black as well, too, that don't give a shit about them. And they're killing, stealing from their own people and all this other stuff. So I'm saying all this to say that these are all forms of cooning. So you can be somebody who is black, who does not speak proper, and you could be a coon. You can be somebody who is black and speaks with a proper dialect or talks white and also be cooning as well, too. So I think the cooning can happen on both sides, but nobody really wants to talk about that. The other thing I was going to say, too, is that I think that it's less about they see that another black kid is cooning when they speak proper, but more so about the fact that they're not speaking the same way as everybody else who they know and the way they grew up. So in other words, they didn't have parents who were trying to force them to assimilate to these um, non-black and white environments, whereas... Uh, this this kid who is only knows that because that's the way that they were taught and that's the way that they were raised. But nobody's going to hold the parent accountable. They're just going to target the kid. So in other words, the, the parent is setting the kid up to basically be clowned, laughed at, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, too, I think we really need to talk about something that happens with the black kids who actually clown the kid who, quote unquote, speaks white that nobody wants to go into. There's this thing that I noticed, I, and I kind of saw it growing up as well, too. Um, from Kind of from my experience, my experience was slightly different than some other people who I think experienced this, but there, I could kind of see, you know, where this has happened with a lot of people. But um, I think that a lot of the blacks who clown the black kids who talked white or acted white were doing so because they have this thing that I would call top dog syndrome. Now, let me explain what top dog syndrome is. I don't know if any of y'all are fre or, uh, um, uh, fans of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but in, there was an episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where it was Will and Carlton, and they were trying to pledge this fraternity. And they were supposed to be kind of like the Q's, but I think they were called the Gammas because they, I don't think they really wanted to shout out a real black fraternity like in the Divine Nine, so they were called the Gammas. And so the, there was this dude who led the fraternity and his name was Top Dog, or that's the name that he went by in the show. And so Top Dog was pledging both Will and Carlton along with other pledgees. And he was always get it, like going hard on Carlton. You know, he was um, making him do more work than everybody else. He was kind of giving him harder conditions and things like that. And mostly it was because he found out that Carlton came from a rich or wealthy family because, you know, Uncle Phil was a successful lawyer and they had this big old house and all this other stuff. So he, so he um, found out that Carlton was, was well, his family was wealthy. He found out that he had a butler and all this other stuff. So he's thinking like, man, this dude is privileged. So he started mistreating Carlton and, and treating him worse than the other pledges because of the fact that, you know, he came from an environment where he didn't really seemingly have to struggle. And so if y'all remember this episode, Carlton had to get with his ass because, you know, he basically tried to let Will into the fraternity, but wouldn't let Carlton in because he felt like Carlton was a sellout because and he was and essentially he was calling Carlton a coon because of the fact that he was in a wealthy situation. Now, what Carlton did was he kind of clapped back on him and he was like, you know, um, being black is not what I'm, I'm I'm not trying to be black. It's what I am. And if you ask me, you're the real sellout. And Carlton was absolutely right. You know, it's the idea that um, he was trying to trip him up and they're running the same race. 
You know, it's the fact that we're all black at the end of the day. And the reality is, is that the white supremacist doesn't care what type of money we come from. And that's why a lot of celebrities experience anti-black racism as well, too, because the reality is, is no matter how much money you make, you will be treated a certain way by the dominant society. So I think that a lot of the blacks back in the day had top dog syndrome because there was an inherent level of jealousy that a lot of them had because they themselves wanted a proximity to whiteness. So it's ironic that they're making fun of black people who speak white for uh, or, or acting white uh, for, you know, the way that they grew up, the way that they were raised and the way that their parents wanted them to be when the re when the reality was, is that this is actually what they wanted for themselves. So what they're not talking about is the jealousy and the idea that they wanted a closer proximity to whiteness. And maybe a little bit of a safer environment for some people, especially if you grew up in the hood and that type of thing. But the reality is, is that they wanted a closer proximity to whiteness and they were jealous that some other black person had it. And the truth is, is that no matter where you are at as a black person, you are not safe in a system of white supremacy. And that's why I said that I don't really think that black kids really understood the whole concept of white supremacy and cooning as much as I think some of the pro-black community is projecting. And because if they did, they would understand that having a proximity to whiteness does not mean more opportunities. It also doesn't always mean safer either, because there are a lot of times that black people go to the suburbs and to these nice areas and they have to watch their back because there's some Karen or Ken who's back there trying to basically say, what are you doing in our neighborhood? I'm going to call the police and then the police basically offs them with impunity. And we all know that goes on. So top dog syndrome is when you act like that nigga who was in this black fraternity who was trying to call Carlton a sellout just because he was jealous of the fact that he had all these this wealth and all this other or his family had all this wealth. So um, my, I, I think I'm kind of getting off topic here, but I think the point I'm trying to make is that when it comes to the black person who was considered the Oreo, as my man put it in the request, I think the reality is, is that they got treated that way because there is a certain stigma that has been created about black people. And so you have one side of the coin where um, this stigma was created by the dominant society and some parents basically are trying to remove their kid from blackness altogether without obviously physically removing them from it. And then you have this other side who says, hey, you're black, you need to act like it. And because all of us do that. And so I think that you have this kid who acts, uh, who is, is um, deemed to act white or speak white, who's being pulled from different sides. It's almost kind of like... Um, I don't want to compare it to being mixed because I really do think that the dominant society treats mixed people uh, worse than the than black people do, like far, far worse, because black people have always, always um, accepted mixed people, you know, especially when you look at celebrities and the way that we've championed them on as black people, despite them not being fully black. I think the point I'm trying to make, though, is it's similar to the mindset of the mixed person's experience where they believe that. A white person and a black person or the group groups is what I mean. Groups of white people, groups of black people don't accept them equally when the reality is, is that there's more things that actually come into play. So I think that when it came to the black person who spoke and acted white, I think people blame that person for behaving that way without realizing who really was responsible for them being that way in the first place. Anyway, y'all, so um, that's what I got for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. I will definitely have more to come, so make sure you stay tuned. Other than that, I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's day, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.